Major funding for A Taste of Louisiana with John Foltz and Company is made possible in part by Zatarain's authentic New Orleans style dinner mixes. Zatarain's, a good way to jazz up dinner and a real New Orleans original since 1889. Louisiana, she's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, where you can come as you are and leave different. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting and the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Judge Thomas Fitzgerald Porter and his wife Wilhelmina built a magnificent home near the Keene River in 1912. The style they chose was turn-of-the-century architecture influenced by Queen Anne and colossal brick pillars suggesting colonial revival. A large building located on the property was dismantled piece by piece to supply the materials necessary for construction. With careful coordination, their home was completed in three months and y'all at a cost of 15 hundred bucks. I'm Jeff John Foles. Welcome to Natchitoches, Louisiana and to the beautiful Judge Porter House. This eclectic B&B &B located on 2nd Street in Natchitoches was not only a rare find for owner Todd working but a piece of history preserved in this town. Judge Porter House boasts 3,000 square feet of living area and 33 windows, 15 of them over 8 feet tall. This ceiling painting was a gift from local artist Bobby W and enhances the French reproduction chandelier with its 785 pieces of cut crystal. The dining room table and buffet are Queen Anne style dating back to 1913. Imagine owning a complete set of these beautiful Stuart crystal pieces. Look how gorgeous they are. Colors and themes can be such a decision when decorating, but here original 1825 English wallpaper registered with the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation is the perfect choice. Fruitier vine by Schumacher was Todd's pick when he first laid eyes on it. The garden room is painted in hot mustard, and the Louisiana Tista bed with ram's headboard is from the early 1800s. I just love this color. And y'all, what a piece of history preserved here. Judge Porterhouse retained this little piece of original cheesecloth wallpaper backing located in a parlor closet. It would have been a shame to paint over this. The second floor has three beautiful guest accommodations. The New Orleans room contains an English dresser and matching armoire, turn of the century antiques, and this gorgeous brass bed. And what a unique decorating thought this is. Light and airy bathrooms are a welcome sight in any B&B. These wide galleries invite you to relax prior to retiring in this four-poster bed with cross-kill linens and pastel colors. I tell you, what a compliment to the princess room. And this old oak dresser is a functional piece in the bedroom. So the next time you need to get away for business or pleasure, come and enjoy the tranquil breezes blowing across the wide gallery here at the Judge Porter House. 
I wish you could have been there on the gallery of the Judge Porter House, this gorgeous home built in 1912 to just absorb the breezes off of the Canyon River, y'all. I, I tell you, it's absolutely the greatest experience of your life. If you hadn't stayed in a bed and breakfast somewhere in your state, especially here in Louisiana, you ought to try it. Put it on your agenda because it's an experience you will never regret. Now, what kind of foods came out of that early Creole settlement of North Louisiana, the Natchitoches Cane River country? Well, a couple of great dishes, but two of them in particular I want to cook for you today, and the first is sitting right here on my platter. This is all of the beautiful ingredients for the Cane River fish soup. And I want to explain all of these to you. There's so much here. Here's the uh, green lip mussels, and the great thing about cooking these soups, you can incorporate some uh, seafoods from other parts of the, of the world. This is New Zealand. This is the, uh, the black mussels from the East Coast, of course, Louisiana oysters. This is our gorgeous fish. You can use trout, you can use redfish, you can use catfish, any kind of nice uh, hearty fish will hold up nice in the soup. We have crawfish from the bayous of Louisiana, which make a wonderful, wonderful color in the soup as well as taste. Look at these shrimp. Oh fresh swimming in the Gulf of Mexico just this morning. Beautiful fish. These are the uh, uh, the little neck clam family, count neck clams out of, again, New England. But the great thing about this soup, y'all, it's of the bouillabaisse family. In Louisiana, we make soups that more resemble gumbo with the dark brown roux, but the Cubillon, the early Cubillon of Louisiana was just a good fish stock where all of your seafoods were slowly poached just as they did the bouillabaisse on the Mediterranean around Marseille. So let me show you how we make it. Uh, first of all, I made a great seafood, or I should say shellfish stock. I have fish in here, crawfish, shrimp, and I've been simmering this with uh, some onions and garlic and parsley, bay leaves for about an hour, just uh, on a slow simmer. I didn't want to boil it. You can see there's no boiling going on there. Now in my cast iron pot, I'm going to put a little bit olive oil. This comes from the Spanish as well as the Italians here in Louisiana. Great olive oil. So it would have found its way with the Creole settlement up to, um, to that part of the world we call Natchitoches in North Louisiana. Now into my little pot right here, I'm going to simmer some onion, celery, bell pepper, all of those nice, wonderful flavors of Louisiana's uh, Creole country, onry, onion, celery, and Hey, as much as y'all want. You know, I like to put a lot of it in here, but go ahead and put red and yellow bell pepper. After all, this is Creole, and you want to have a really nice, uh, a really nice uh, uh, color in the pot as well. So I'm going to simmer this uh, around until that wilts. Garlic, y'all. You have to have a lot of great garlic in a, a cubillon or a fish soup, especially if it comes from Creole country where the Spanish, the French, the Italians, all of those cultures created our wonderful Creole culture of Louisiana. Now once these are uh, sauteed for just a second, I'm going to add some fresh tomatoes. Again, Creole tomatoes, very important part of Creole cuisine, and look how gorgeous that pot's uh, looking here. Into this, I'm going to add some mushrooms. They used to use wild mushrooms in old days. I'm going to just use the button mushrooms today. Again, just adding all of that great flavor. And now to thicken the soup, because I don't want it too thick, I'm going to sprinkle in just a little bit flour, about two or three tablespoons, just to pick up the olive oil to make a light roux, just a little bit of it. And you want to put in just enough to pick up the oil, no more. Than, uh, uh, than necessary, otherwise the soup will be way too thick. So just go ahead, and you can see how that's picking up all of that oil so nice. And look at the bottom of that pot, how clean it is. Now a little touch of tomato sauce, because I want this to have kind of a rusty color. If you've had bouillabaisse, you know exactly what color it is. It's that nice, kind of rusty, light red color. You get that from cooking a little bit of this tomato sauce down into the bottom of the pot. Ah, now y'all, the stock. This is the true flavor of the soup because remember all of the bones of the fish, some of the clams, the shrimp, the crawfish, all of that shellfish is down in this wonderful uh, stock pot full of flavor. You've heard the saying, the closer the bone, the sweeter the meat. Where do you think that comes from? Right here from the stocks. That's where it's all that great flavor marries together. So now I'm going to 
add the stock in just enough to give me a great coupillon, a nice poaching liquid as I call it. Let me kind of stir this around just a little bit here and kind of move this around a little bit. Get my strainer out of the way. I think I have enough stock here. You see this nice color, very light. This is a poaching liquid. It's not a stew or a heavy roux based uh, soup. Very, very nice and light. As far as for the flavor, what about a little thyme? a little basil, a little tarragon, all of those wonderful flavors from the Mediterranean that came to Louisiana so many years ago. What about a bay leaf down in here? Throw a bay leaf or two, even though somewhere in the stock, this is the Mediterranean bay leaf. I'm going to put in a touch of Creole seasoning into it. You can use uh, salt and pepper and some of those other nice flavors, but I like Creole seasoning. Look how gorgeous that is. Now y'all the seafood. Mm, mm, mm. Let me put in a couple of the the uh, uh, mussels, the black as well as the green. I'm going to just throw some in there. And all of this natural juice is going to flow into the soup. Some of the fish, I'm only going to put about half of it in now because, of course, I want to save the rest right before service. I'm creating my flavor here, a couple of the crawfish, but right before I serve it, I'm going to put the rest of my seafood in. Take a look at this pot, y'all. Get down in this pot. Look at that. <laughs> all of that wonderful flavor. You can throw in a little hot sauce, all of your favorite herbs and spices. Just kind of go wild in this soup. And once this cooks for about 20 minutes, you want to uh, let it simmer to pick up all those flavors in about 10 minutes before serving. Go ahead and put in the rest of your seafood, your arches, your clams, your mussels. Let them poach just until they're perfectly done, and then you want to serve it in this nice tureen. Take a look at this tureen here, y'all. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Mm, mm, and take a look down in that if you can see this beautiful tureen. Look at the shrimp and all of that nice flavor. Mm, mm, I could get a bowl of this right this minute here. Well, and I will too, wish you were here with me. Okay, y'all, the next wonderful dish I got from the Creole country of Natchitoches, Louisiana, was a wonderful dish that's called breast of quail cologne. And of course, the quail, uh, I've deboned the breast. Take a look at this. This is the whole breast. This is Bob White or Pharaoh quail. Uh, but I've taken the breast and I've deboned them because this is a breakfast dish, believe it or not. So I'm going to take my quail and put it right down the breast, right down in the flour because the flour is lightly seasoned. And I'm going to season the quail breast just for a second with a little Creole seasoning, salt, pepper, herbs. Again, the thing that I like about seasoning I like you to use whatever seasoning you're used to. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of that right down into the pot and then dust it around for a second like this just to coat it nicely. You don't want to put so much flour on here that it just makes a gooey coat. So I'm going to add a little bit butter to my skillet here, y'all, just enough to kind of get that saute going nice and then put my seasoned breast right down into it. And it's, they're going to simmer very quickly, and y'all, this doesn't have to cook long. You want to just cook these, will cook in just a couple of minutes. So you put your butter in the uh, skillet, go ahead and add your seasoned little quail breast down in there like this, and once they saute for a second, then you're going to add all of your wonderful seasonings to it. Of course, the flour is going to make your roux, your thickening agent. So go ahead and put that down. Let me wash this flour off of my hands here. But the quail, there's a lot of different species or varieties of quail in the United States, but more of them today are farm raised than actually coming off of the land from the hunt. So you can get a lot of nice quail at your grocery store and debone them and make a stock with the uh, leg bones and the wing bones. So take a look at this, how they're sauteing nicely in this skillet. Uh, I'm going to turn these quickly. Breakfast? Quail for breakfast? Sure, quail on toast. Huh, one of the best items in the Creole households, y'all. Now, into this, I'm going to add my seasonings. Look how nice and brown those are already, just right on the top right there. Now, onions again, celery. The trinity in Louisiana, onions, celery, bell pepper, red and yellow bell pepper, a lot of garlic, wonderful colors, wonderful flavors, and I'm going to add garlic. Can you imagine me not cooking with garlic? Sprinkle right down into that. 
I'm going to throw in some wild oyster mushrooms, y'all. Just look at that. Wild oyster mushrooms out of the swamps of Louisiana. And then once it gets really nice and uh, saute it down into that skillet, I'm going to deglaze with just a little touch of sherry. Just a little touch. Be careful sometimes the sherry will flame up if the, if the skillet is really hot. So just kind of pull it off of the fire. I don't know if this one will flame up or not. But normally it does. Yeah, there it is. And the sherry will burn off real quickly. Add a little touch of some really nice quail stock, a little beef stock, whatever you want it to be. And I'm going to let this sit here, y'all, and simmer for just a second. And then I'm going to go ahead and season it with a little salt, pepper, herbs. And when we get back in just a second, I'm going to show you how we actually plate it up. But when I was at the Judge Porter house, Todd Working, the owner of the home, shared one of his great recipes for a little hot appetizer using cheese. It was fantastic. With olives? Take a look. Todd, I remember just like uh, yesterday, the first time I walked up to this house, y'all were sitting on the front porch, a couple of guys. Do you remember that uh -huh. day? Yeah, I do. We were uh, having a little martini and, uh, <laughs> and uh, having, <laughs> having some of our uh, cheese balls here. Yeah, you know, and I, and I remember coming in and thinking to myself, now this, now this looks like fun, Main Street Natchitoches just about, and everybody's sitting around having a good time, and the center attraction on the plate was these simple little cheese balls, and they really are very, very simple, and I want to share them with everybody uh, today, so what, what do we have here to begin with? Well, we have a, a cup of flour and a cup of sharp cheddar cheese grated. And uh, we're just going to mix that together first. Okay, good. And what else goes into it? And then it we're going to add a, a quarter pound of melted butter. Okay, just pour that in. And this okay. is basically going to become the batter for these uh, nice little cheese balls here. What else runs in there? And then we have a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. All right, just throw that in there. Okay. Okay. And then some cayenne pepper. Oh, boy, the more the merrier, huh? <laughs> now, I guess if I put the spicy Monterey Jack in there, I probably wouldn't put quite as much cayenne no. pepper, huh? In fact, you can use a lot of different cheeses for this recipe. All right. Here's some Good. garlic powder. Yep, just throw that in there. Okay. Now, what about fresh herbs? I bet fresh herbs would be really nice in here, too. Yeah, huh? cracked pepper, uh, chives, anything like that. Basil, all of Basil. those kind of things uh -huh. would be really nice. Now, I have to ask you a question, uh, uh, Todd. You, you're from Tennessee originally. Right. Did you come to Natchitoches looking to open up a B&B? &B? No, actually, I, would, I was raised in Tennessee and worked in North Carolina for seven years and got transferred here. And this was just an investment property for me. And then after a couple of years, I looked around and saw all the other B&Bs and thought I would like to do that because it's, it involves meeting other people, and I enjoy that. Well, you know, also, I guess the town of Natchitoches has so many festivals, and it's one oh, of the yeah. great Creole areas of Louisiana, so there must be a lot of need for us. It's, it's such a historic town also, right. and the, our tourist trade is... is is phenomenal. Now, you know, one of the things that catch my attention, certainly, as I walked into the house is that magnificent uh, dining room. Was all of the furniture here when you bought the house? There wasn't any furniture in the house. In fact, the dining room is probably the furniture that dates closest to the house of 1912. It dates to 1913. Now, what about that magnificent wallpaper? It's beautiful in there. Um, and a local antique dealer, that, uh, Robbie Lucky, helped me pick out the wallpaper. And, um, in fact, he's coming by later, and I'd like for you to meet him. Well, good. I'd love to meet him, because I'll tell you what, it's beautiful paper. Now, once all of this is done right here, and it's all put together, it's very, very simple to do. Uh -huh. All you do is get a little bit of it in your hand like right. this and wrap an olive up in the middle of it. And, of course, you can use any olives. I'm just using a stuffed pimento olive, and you make a nice little round olive ball like right. this uh, coated with the cheese. And then what do you do? You, you just want to put that on a cookie sheet, and you can bake that in a preheated 400-degree oven for 10 minutes. And then and they get lightly brown. Oh, yeah, really nice. And I tell you what, it's a simple recipe, mm -hmm. very, very elegant, especially with martinis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and very spicy. And this, is, and this is what they look like uh -huh. when they're done. Really beautiful right there. Yeah. Look how nice that is. Can you imagine anything so simple as cheese and olive balls and with a martini? Hey, pretty doggone good, y'all. Now let me show you my quail. I finished sauteing them, and of course they're in this nice uh, flavored sherry sauce. Hey, I'm gonna put a little bit more of the thyme and basil on top of it, and then y'all right on top of toast. Just take a look at this. Mm, a couple breasts right on top of the toast like that, and then go ahead and put an ample portion of that really nice 
seasoning right on top of it like that. Isn't that great? A breakfast dish from that wonderful Judge Porthouse. A couple other dishes that I found. Look at this nice apple pie right here. Wilhelmina's apple pie. She used to serve this for Fourth of July. And I'll put a little powdered sugar on top of it. And of course, you have to put some creme fraiche right on top of it like that. Isn't that beautiful? And then eggplant fadzi right next to it. Eggplant cooked with a little bit onion, celery, bell pepper stuffed back into the shell and then a nice marinara sauce with some roasted red bell peppers. Y'all, you, uh, uh, you heard Todd mention Mr. Lucky, Robbie Lucky, uh, telling him a lot about furniture. Hey, let's visit with him and see what he had to say about renovating that home. Robbie, first of all, let me commend you on the great job that y'all have done collectively uh, in this home. How did you and Todd first meet? Well, it's kind of interesting. Uh, after Todd, of course, had purchased the house, he uh, one day uh, simply strolled into my shop. I have a store downtown in the historic district. I've been here. Uh, I'm a native of Natchitoches, and I've been in business about 18 years, and it's a gift and antique shop and art gallery. And Todd sort of happened in one day and uh, introduced himself. Uh, I, of course, had heard that this house had sold, and I was, of course, excited about meeting the new owner. Um, and he, at that particular time, really uh, had bought this house just as a residence, not really um, deciding at that point that he was going to venture into the bed and breakfast business, which came about somewhat later. But uh, that's, uh, that, that was the beginning. That's how so, we met. So, so he walked in, and then you all developed a rapport. Now, I can only imagine somebody walking into a project uh, this size and saying, well, it's got to be a starting point. Where does one begin in decorating a home like this? Well, I think that, uh, you know, budget comes into play, but uh, how this one actually started was after we uh, had met and I visited a while, I, he invited me over to take a look at the house and a walkthrough. And uh, the dining room is really where we ended up uh, beginning by picking the wallpaper, which is uh, a Schumacher design that is uh, documented with the Williamsburg Foundation. Uh, it's of the fruit motif, which of course is very appropriate for the dining area. And uh, originally was an English silk screen that was imported from England. And uh, the colors, uh, which are the deep burgundies and reds and the yellows and mustards, or sort of the beginning of, of what we, how we actually worked colors throughout the entire house. Now, I would have to imagine that the challenge in a project of this size, a project with this scope, would be either determining the period of the home, the period of the furniture, or obviously the cost. Am I right? Well, of course, budget, you know, is uh, the thing that you begin with, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have all the money in the world to be able to do a project like this. Uh, you list your priorities. Um, and you have obviously established X amount of dollars that you have got to work with at first, and then it's a matter of going through that list of priorities and doing one thing at a time. You have to be able to live in a home, I think, for a while before you can really get the feel of, of what you want to do. I mean, it's, it would be a mistake. I think most people, lots of times when they become involved in projects like this, sometimes make a terrible mistake by trying to run out and do it all at one time. You've got to kind of get the feel of the property. It's kind of take your time and make it work for you. Now, where should the focus be in a home like this? Should it be on the outside, the gardens, the paint job, or should it be on the interior? Well, I think that's the most unique thing about this property. Um, if you look at the outside of the house, you know that the garden is absolutely second to none. If someone who is looking for a bed and breakfast who doesn't have an advance reservation and drives down this street, they're automatically turned into this driveway because the gardens are so wonderful. But as you, in a lot of places, the curb appeal is so important, but people who come to this particular bed and breakfast, after they get out of the car and go through the front door, or come through the front door, they automatically realize that it's not just the curb appeal and the outside appearance, but the inside as well. Well, I think that uh, collectively, y'all have come together to do just a magnificent job. I, I know your involvement has been uh, pretty strong from the beginning, but I'll tell you, Todd's done a magnificent job. So thank you so much for sharing your views with us and uh, for telling us a little bit about the direction y'all took here. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good. And thanks to all of you for stopping by as we continue to visit the bed and breakfasts of the Bayou State and cook up more great taste of Louisiana.
Now, what about my fireplace there, as I was talking about? Real, real big fireplace. Should I put a mirror up there, or should it be a painting? What should I do? To learn more about A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Folsom Company, visit PBS online at the internet address on your screen. Hot beignets and warm boudoirs by Chef John Foltz is available for $29.95. This companion book to the series features over 150 recipes. To order, call 1-800-973-7246 or write to the address on your screen. Major funding for A Taste of Louisiana with John Foltz and Company is made possible in part by Zatarain's authentic New Orleans style dinner mixes. Zatarain's, a good way to jazz up dinner and a real New Orleans original since 1889. Louisiana, she's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Additional funding is provided by the Friends of Louisiana Public Broadcasting and the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. <laughs>